Um, OK, so I want to talk about both those, all those four things a little bit and how they, things that we've found coming out of that that related to those. Um, so fine-grained collaboration, as I said, is this idea that um, people can work very closely together. So maybe you know, they're working on the same uh, user story or the same, they may be working on the same method. They're not just working together um, on a project. Um, and we talk about development teams, but I think those teams are very different from some other kinds of teams that we talk about. So um, a software team generally would be, would be uh, a group of people that are working together towards the same goal, but they may be doing, you may have many developers who are all doing more or less the same kind of role in parallel on sort of disconnected parts as opposed to, so that might be similar to say, you know, the chess team, for example. You're, you're, you're all trying to win the same thing, but you're fundamentally working largely separately. Versus something like a rugby team, say, or a World of Warcraft guild, where you're, f you're working uh, to more closely the exact same goal, but you may have different tasks within that, um, within that goal. You're working together at the same time doing different things. Um, and so, Basecamp talks about, for example, being able to do uh, collaborative editing of documents. But if you try to edit the same document as someone else, you get this. So actually, you can't edit it at the same time. What they mean is that two, two people can edit it. You can, somebody can edit it, and then someone else can edit it. But it's not really collaborative. Um, you can't really do it at the same time. Um, contrast that with. Um, Sabitha Edit, for example, or um, Google Docs, which are applications that do allow two people, more people, any number of people really, to actually edit the same document at once. So um, you can get in, you can be working on one part, someone else can be working on the other part, you can delete someone else, someone else just um, typed. And so that's the kind of level of collaboration that we're trying to get to, but these are focused just purely on uh, documents, basically. They don't really even have a code focus, and they're strictly limited to uh, editing. So we wanted an environment that captured not just the code editing, but the debugging, the testing, um, that the whole, the whole environment was, was collaborative. Obviously, that raises some logistical uh, challenges. If you've got, you know, so we were focusing on having groups of about eight doing this. Um, and if you throw eight people all into the into a pot and say, you know, go nuts, they start editing the same methods and they're stepping all over each other and, you know, it seems kind of chaotic. So we started trying to look for some kind of a metaphor that would um, help guide this process in a way that was a little less chaotic. Um, and we looked at, we started looking at nature, we looked at kind of, we thought about bees and ants and we were looking for sort of social uh, group animals. Um, and in the end we decided to settle on this uh, wolf uh, metaphor of hunting, uh, wolf hunting behavior. Um, it's not really the focus of the talk, I just want to show you quickly um, the steps of it, the, the, the parts of it, just so that you understand the kind of collaboration we're talking about. Um, basically when wolves are hunting, um, they're pack animals, so they're, they're, hack, they're hunting all together in the pack, um, and they will roam the territory looking for a possible herd, basically. And that's largely sort of targets of opportunity. Um, when they find a herd, they'll pick a whole bunch of animals and they'll split up into groups, they'll test different animals. And what they're trying to do is find a weak animal. It might be a young animal or a sick animal. Um, they're trying to find an animal that is going to be easiest for them to hunt as a group. Um, once they've found what they think is going to be the easiest prey, they then all come back together and they'll all hunt the same animal together. Um, and the hope is they, will, they, ch they run at the animal. The hope is that the animal runs because the animal is actually going to be more vulnerable when it's running. Um, so if it does, they'll all chase it. Uh, if the animal is smart enough to stand its ground, uh, it actually has the, the highest chance of survival that way. Um, and the wolves will then circle the animal and they basically take it in turns. They'll lie down, <coughs> two of them will sort of bait the animal, try to wear it down, and then they'll swap off for others that are resting. So the wolves get a chance to rest and can keep this up for a very long time, whereas the animal, you know, could be a big moose or something, um, can, you know, by itself could fight off a wolf, but over time it gets worn down. Um, so we, decided that mapped fairly well. Um, we have this idea that the pack is roaming the code base or they're roaming the you know, list of user stories, for example, the backlog, um, and they're looking for what their next, the next thing they're going to attack is. And it might be a refactoring or it might be um, 
it might be a feature they're going to implement. Um, then, uh, sorry, I just talked about that one. Then they split up into, it could be groups, it could be individuals, and they spike, basically. They'll, they'll probably discuss first, um, you know, different ideas they might try. They'll split up. It could even be for 10 minutes. It could be for half an hour, whatever amount of time it takes to try out a whole bunch of ideas just far enough to sort of get a sense, is that working, is that not working? Um, and that'll give them an idea of what the weakest approach, if you will, or the weakest prey is for them to attack, and that's going to be the best way to attack the problem. Um, and we've encouraged them to think of that as the sort of the simplest approach, it's not necessarily the most elegant or the um, <coughs> most forward thinking, it's the simplest thing that will work now, the easiest to implement. Um, once they've selected that, then they all come back together, and again, they have these two modes. So if the uh, if they feel like they have a handle on the problem, in other words, the problem is the problem is showing weakness, they think they can tackle this problem, they will all develop at once. Um, and so they're probably not all editing the same method. What tends to happen is someone says, okay, I'm gonna need, uh, I'm gonna need this helper method in a second, and someone will go off and write it. Um, someone might be writing a unit test while someone else is writing the code, someone might be looking up APIs, someone might be, you know, they could be doing whatever, but they're they're all kind of actively um, they're working as a group, but they're not being delegated. It's not you do this, and you do this, and you do this. They're working largely independently um, on the same task. Uh, if they get to a point where they feel like they're getting bogged down, they're not making progress, um, then they flip into this mode called standing, where um, they will, most of them will rest. It doesn't mean they're not doing anything, but only two of them will be actively programming at once. The others can be doing any kind of a support role. So they could be, uh, they could still be writing a test, they could be um, doing research, they can just be thinking, uh, they can be contributing to the problem, there's only two people actively um, coding. And then they're encouraged to swap every five minutes or so basically, that so they'll swap in, swap out. How did that, no, Ooh, I didn't do this, right. Okay. Um, so, immersion is this idea that, that you are engrossed in your environment and your, in your virtual environment, and you're not so much aware of the environment outside anymore. Um, you, are, are most people here developers or project managers? Developers? Okay. So, probably most of you are, you know, in the zone sometimes when you're programming. You kind of, you lose track, you're focused on the problem. Um, how many of you feel like you get into the zone when you're pair programming? Is it as easy as when you're doing it by yourself? Yeah, probably most people find it not so easy. What about status meetings? Are you in the zone in status meetings? <laughs> okay, so that's a no. Um, people find it harder to get into the zone when they're, or get immersed when, they're, when there's distractions. So it's much harder when you have a real person next to you um, to you know, unless they're focused very much on the same thing so that you're communicating largely through this virtual environment, um, it's much harder to get into the immersion of the environment that you're dealing with because you keep getting pulled back to the real world. Um, and the, so, so basically you want to be, you're, you're fully focused, you're mentally invested, and you feel what, what they call, it's called a presence. You feel a presence in the environment. Um, and the presence doesn't necessarily mean um, that you have, you know, an avatar, a, a physical or a, a human, a humanoid avatar, like you might in World of Warcraft, but you feel like you are in the environment. Um, and so, in this case, we think of the code as the environment. So this is not something like Second Life, where you know you're walking around an office and you walk up and there's a, a board on the wall that has the code on it, and you're both looking at the code. That's very much a a virtual environment that's mapping the real world. Um, and we're not interested in that. For us, the environment that we're interested in is the code. So it's trying to find a way to represent the code and to give you a presence inside that. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about, about that presence in a minute. So I think I'll leave that for the moment. Um, so the interesting thing to note here is that pairing is obviously quite fundamental in a lot of the Agile methodologies has a lot of good things. It you know, increases communication, better quality of code, uh, avoids having to do code reviews separately, but it's actually quite a restrictive view of the world because the two of you are sat there, you both have to be looking at the same thing. You've only got the one screen, you might have two keyboards, but fundamentally it's like you're sharing 
an avatar in this world. Um, there are two of you sort of struggling for control in this, in this environment. Um, 